you know the 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 bhaktas of the past that their songs are are so deeply personal and and intimate in their relationship to mm. god and yeah. and kind of stepping into that stream yeah with um, that you know gr- as gracefully as possible yeah well it's, it's just it- Hey everyone, it's Raghu back, and I'm back with Jai Utah. And Jai, welcome. Thank you once again, Raghu. Yeah, I don't think anybody needs any real introductions, either to Jai himself or to Jai and I and where we come from. So, uh, but in case there's probably people out who don't know that <laughs> we've known each other for. We won't even say. Where did but we it, meet? But, we met in Allahabad, India. No, at, in Vrindavan. We met in Vrindavan? Yeah. Uh, yeah, after at, you saw Ram Das. So we're talking about how we met around Neem Karoli Baba. So yeah, you were there with uh, Mark and Rhonda. How do I remember? That? No, it wasn't Rhonda. It wasn't Rhonda. Point, but it was uh, Gangadhar and, and Charlie Govind. And, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Jai, well, you know, even though maybe some people out there have heard the story, but you, it's a, it's a great story. You came to to Delhi looking to see another teacher, and bumped into Ramdas. You just to uh, give us a little. Well, I had met Ramdas back in California. Um, uh huh. I went to his first, you know, uh, lectures, his first events, I guess you could say. And um, we even invited him to our kind of homemade yoga ashram in Berkeley. And he came over and we sang kirtan and we had dinner. He was so accessible, you know, it was really beautiful. And then went to India to see this other guru who um, I was told upon landing in India that he was in jail for mass murder. (laughs) So... I mean, that's really, so, you know, that's I, a TV show. It is, it is, it is. <laughs> you know, the ac- actual truth of what happened, that's a whole nother, another story. But yeah. at that moment, yeah. <laughs> wow. So we were wandering yeah. around and and I went to a bookstore and the bookseller told me that Ramdas was giving classes at the, um, what's that hotel? The, oh, in Delhi. Uh, yeah, in, in Kanat Circus. <laughs> Yeah, okay, brain. Uh, we're having a yeah, brain. No, brain no. We're now we're having old brain. Go on. So I went went there, and the guy at the hotel said he had Palatites. just Palatites. Palatites. Got it. The guy at the hotel said he had just left to go to Vrindavan to see his guru. So we or I at that point was done with gurus because of that experience and <laughs> yeah, and all this say. other stuff that I had heard and. Uh, but, you know, had no agenda. Agenda was cut. So we knew Ramdas and loved Ramdas. So we went to Vrindavan. And uh, the Tanga driver, we, we, we took the train to Mathura, Matura, yeah. and then got into a, a Tanga. It's a camel cart thingy. And he took us right to Maharaji's temple. But we didn't want to go to Maharaji's temple because we didn't want anything to do with temples or gurus. So instead, he took us to Jaipuria Bhavan, mm. where... Um, Ramdas and you and a bunch of Westerners were staying because Maharaji had said, stay away for a week. So um, over the course of that week, it's like I was two two parts of me. One part of me didn't want anything to do with seeing a guru. And the other part of me was getting more and more and more attracted to Maharaji because every evening at sunset, remember you all and then me, I joined you, were doing RT on the roof of Mm. the the guest yeah. house. And so when the week was up, I literally ran to the ashram. Um, and I was the first one there waiting for Maharaji to come out. And and it's really hard for me to remember my emotional state because I know mentally I was not into it. But mm. some other place in me, so like I was it. so into it. Mm. And anyway, you know, then Maharaji came out. Uh, People gathered. Oh, it was such a beautiful small group, but people gathered, and then Maharaji came out. And what did he say when he saw you? <sighs> he asked. Um, he didn't speak to me that first time. Mm. He he asked Charlie 
it, what he did in America, and Charlie said he, he was a musician. So uh, Maharaji asked Charlie to sing something, so he sang a little kirtan. Really? And then he asked Janaki, who her guru was, and she told this man that we had meant to see, and Maharaji said, you Americans are so easily deceived. <laughs> he said that. And Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, you know, we can spend the, the whole time just talking about that first darshan. I'll, I'll leave it to say that um, it wasn't like I saw Maharaji and I, I knew this is my guru, this is my everything. Um, but I felt like there was no place else on earth that I wanted to be. So um, after he jowed us, I went back to the hotel and, you know, I guess I walked around Vrindavan. It was so amazing in those days. Mm. And I was there the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And gradually um, this, well, it really came very strongly in a dream, uh, this realization of, well, I can't say who Maharaji was, a realization of who Maharaji, because we don't know who Maharaji was, but this realization that, he had been my savior and my protector lifetimes after lifetimes mm. after lifetimes. It wasn't immediate, but um, the immediate thing was like this incredible, like nothing really was happening, some conversations, but it was like being at the Ringling Brothers Circus. <laughs> <laughs> you know you, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway. I, yeah, well, uh, I mean, it's the same. I had the same... When I first met him, which went through my mind was and being. It wasn't just a intellectual thing. It was oh shit! I've known you. I know you. I knew you forever before, forever after. You know that infinity kind of loop, and uh, no different than what happened to you after whatever a few yeah. days or something. Yeah, yeah. But the um, you said well, I could. We could go on talking about this for the whole podcast. You know what, though? It is it is as directly related to the record that you made. So Jai has a a, a new record. Is it out yet, Jai? Yes, it came out uh, a week, well, just last week. It came out last week. Dust and Tears is the name of it. But why I say that... Uh, this is couldn't be more directly related to our experience, Jai and I, all those years ago, with Neem Karoli Baba and with the tradition, the legacy of what it really was. Uh, this record represents that. I mean, I, so it'd be fun to tell the story of of how because this this record represents music that is essentially um, nothing but devotional in nature. Not yeah. just the music, but the words, and it's wonderful how you and Nubia, Jai's wife, put that put that together collectively. That's also a great aspect of everything. Yeah. So tell that story, Jai. Well, yeah, I, I like what you said. It, it it is, you know, I sometimes people ask, well, what did what did you what happened to you with Maharaji? And and in a way, it's impossible to really answer that. But if I try to put it into like a a one sentence. It's like it's like he planted the seed of longing in our hearts, and he gave us a way to water that seed. Each person slightly different, but but um, a way to water that seed. And it, it, in the tradition of devotion in India, um, this sense of longing for the beloved, longing for God, and, and both the beautiful, almost blissful sense of that present presence combined simultaneously experienced with the, the abject, heartbreaking sense of distance, sense of separation. Yep, yep. Um, it inhabits all the, the songs of the great bhaktas of, 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 of the Indian past. Uh, you know, bhaktas mean devotees, the saints, the... You know, so we had... We, meaning you, me, and all the people in our kind of mandala circle, had been reading books for years and years of, of the poems of the Bhakti saints. You know, the poems of Mirabai, the poems of um, Gita Govinda, the poems of the Bows of Bengal, so, so many. Uh, Kabir, Tukaram, Tulsidas. Mm. 
but the, the, the reality of it was that these weren't poems. They were all songs, that everything was, was meant to be sung. And, um, you know, some like Tosidas or, or uh, Jayadev, you know, their song cycles. And some of the, the songwriters were, were in, like, like hundreds of individual standalone songs <laughs> to be sung, to be listened to, and, and to be enjoyed by, by the mm. common people, just the, the villagers, the people around them. So, you know, I've been dabbling with some translations for many years, and I've put a couple of things to music, but never really dived into it, dove into it, whatever that word is. And until one day, it was about four years ago, I think, I think, I was sitting in this room, and I, I was really kind of lazy. I was lying down with my guitar. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> you don't play guitar lying down, but I was, and, and Nubia was sitting at her desk, this desk, and... Uh, she was looking through a, a book called Poems of Vidyapati, who was a Bengali songwriter, not poet, but songwriter, um, from, I think, 15th century. And she, she read a lo- uh, out loud a line, um, such is my fate that, that the clouds give no rain, such is my fate that my love brings only pain. And I, w- I was playing this little figure on my guitar. Mm. And I said, well, wait, say that again. Mm. And she said it again, and, I, and it just fit immediately into this little figure on the guitar that I was playing. And so we just kind of looked at each other, and this light bulb went off and said, you know, let's dive into this ancient tradition and become part of it. Let's, let's you, know, you know, people say, pay it forward in a way. Mm. Let's, let's, let's bring it forward. Um, not in the sense that we're going to improve on any of these songs, but but let's make them our own and, and put them in a, a little bit more of a modern idiom. And um, I put my music to it. And, and so that was kind of the, the, the birth of this project. And, and it took us a long time. You know, I, I actually released two albums <laughs> in the interim since that, that first idea yeah. and then the release of this yeah. album. But they were, I would say, sm- kind of smaller albums, for lack of a better word. And pandemic came and, wow, you know, what a, <laughs> what a time in the world, in all of our lives mm. this has been. So, so it evolved slowly um, till finally we had about, I think, seven or eight songs. And... Um, we had collaborated on the words on all of them. And uh, I'd actually have to say that Nubia did more of the lyrics th- than yeah. me. Yeah. But what a beautiful f- thing for us to work on together. Yeah. And Sitting then it became loose. time to record them. And then recording, mm-hmm. of course, is a whole nother saga. We we have some sponsors who helped us with the recording finances. And, um, uh, you know... Th- this these songs were so close to my heart that I, that the recording process was really really hair splitting oh. and you know I just I, I became so I just really wanted it to be mm. so right and so expressive of the emotions and also you know some insecurity because the songs are all in English and really the whole most of my last decades of albums have all been kirtan mantras. Yeah. Um, so here was me expressing these emotions and these mm. sentiments that we feel we inherited from these great beings of the past and trying to express them. You know, I, I was very <laughs> self, oh, overly self-critical and, very, you know, gave myself a really hard time because I really wanted it to, to be right. Mm. And you know, I feel it is right. I just love yeah. it. Yeah, but even you know, it's funny. What I either heard you say, read, can't remember that because you wanted to, you wanted to approach this in a very. Um, you didn't think that you were going to have to blow this up into a huge production that would cost a tremendous amount of money, which recording can, and you were going to be more frugal. And so what I'm, I mean, 
I'm, you know, uh, for everybody who doesn't know, of course, Jai and I did work together in a, in a, in a label in the 90s, long, long time ago. I'm going to bring something up uh, musically from then, too, I have that affected me uh, deeply. So it sounds phenomenal. And uh, Jai works with Ben Leback. Leanback. Lineback. Lineback, yeah. who is a excellent producer and i don't know who the engineer was who record who did the yeah, actual record uh, ben, is ben did it eh? yeah with an yeah. assistant or something yeah yeah i mean really well recorded really well produced and uh, i'm saying that from as much as i know after all my years of, of working in in that area so i don't know where the frugal part came in that's all i'm saying yeah. <laughs> well you know, there's not a horn. There's a horn section in one song. There's not a horn section. There's not, oh, a, str there's not a string section. There's not a, a thousand musicians. <laughs> um, we really tried to make the production of each song match the sentiment of that song. Mm. So, um, yeah, it was frugal. Um, Comparatively, yeah, but I mean, we anyone who knows about recording knows that it's that it is costly. Um, yeah, but f frugal must also produce something uh, very uh, spacious in terms of you being able to convey these words, and it was all in support of that. So I th I think it turned out right in terms of the production. Anyhow, well, well thanks. I, so, I, I I do too, and. And also it was important that the production didn't overshadow the songs. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. And, yeah. and, and I felt like, not in a, any kind of weird way, but there was a real responsibility in terms of stepping, mm. like literally, well, we, we've, we've all stepped deeply into the kirtan tradition. Yeah. But, but this is certainly, it's, yeah. it's, it's part of bhakti tradition, but it's a slightly different than the kirtan tradition. It's, yeah. And stepping in, to these songs, these deeply personal, you know, the 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 bhaktas of the past, the, their songs are are so deeply personal and, and intimate in their relationship to mm. God, and yeah. and kind of stepping into that stream, yeah, with um, that you know as gracefully as possible. Yeah, well, it's, it's just extraordinarily well done because. It could get touchy when you're using these kinds of lyric and so on, matching it to the bob inside you that's delivering, the, the, the spiritual expression that's delivering it. But we, we need to, we're talking about music. It's awful. We need to play something. I like so, to talk about music. I talk yeah. with my son about music every night. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's that's a little something. different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, it's fun to talk about music, and I love it as well. But let, we're going to play one of the tracks from the album called Cover Me With Your Feather. And uh, Jai will just talk about it for a, a little bit after uh, we listen. So here we go. Cover me with your feathers Raise me up in your wings You who set your love upon me You to whom I sing From the terrors of night The arrows that fly by day The wave of fear that captures me So tell us a little bit, Jai, about the, how that particular song came about. I mean, I, I, I pick stuff, obviously, I'm picking things that I really resonated with. I, I, I mean, the whole album, the album as a whole is an unusual thing because it's a real album. Yeah. <laughs> That's highly unusual. You know, we thought about, oh, should we release singles? But, but it, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't appropriate for this. And you <laughs> sent me a CD, by the way. I thank you so much for that because, you know, the, there it is. So, you know, MP3s, everybody, don't do it. 
Okay. A CD yeah. is, I mean, and I haven't listened to a CD in a while, so I was like, holy Jesus. This is, <laughs> it's different, right? And it's that's nothing so compared to, and it's not as good as, uh, as vinyl, for instance, right? We're, we're having vinyl made. Oh, you um, are? Yeah. It's, just, it's, you know, the wait time is, is Like a long. year, I heard. <laughs> no, we should have them. They said we're having them by the end of February. So mm. that that's like a three months, three month wait time. Mm. Um, this song is a little bit different because it's a song from the Old Testament. Cover me with your feathers. I I had recorded the twenty third Psalm, so a little you know early in the pandemic, and singing it you know far and wide with different audiences. It, it, was very, very moving and very, very profound. So I, I wanted to look a little deeper into the book of Psalms. And I was just mm. kind of, you know, scrolling through. Well, it's like scrolling through a book and see where your finger stops, except it's Google. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how the, that image works. But I, I stopped at the 91st Psalm. Mm. And and I read it and I and I found it to be like really powerful. And then I read about it, and it was composed by Moses, um, which puts it at a very very ancient date. And the in in a very short form, the the story was that Moses was crossing the desert with with the people and. You know, they were, that was a 40 year trek across the desert. And at one point they were getting very, very, very uh, hungry, thirsty, and they, they were losing faith in Moses as their leader and they were losing faith in God. And God gave Moses the message to climb Mount Sinai. He didn't say what you're going to find up there. He didn't give him any further instructions. He said, climb Mount Sinai. So Moses did. And, um, we know that Moses was, uh, a shy man. He was an insecure man. That's why he always traveled with his younger brother, Aaron, and Aaron gave the speeches. Oh. Um, so anyway, Moses got to the top of the mountain and he saw what was described as this vast cloud. And flying in and out of the cloud were angels. And uh, angels of all sizes and angels of all shapes. And there was terrifying angels of, of plague, angels of death, angels of pestilence. And there was, you know, beautiful angels of, of grace, angels of healing, angels of uh, enlightenment. But, but it was a really, Moses couldn't handle it. He, and he panicked and he got really scared. And he recited this, what became the 91st Psalm, uh, asking God to protect him, be my refuge, be, be my, uh, protect me from the terrors of death of night and, and the arrows that fly by day protect me. I can't stand without you. I can't, I can't take another step without you. And so the 91st Psalm is actually really long and I just borrowed so, some small bits of it. Um, and I, I later found that, that it's sung in times of need, in times of desperation, in times mm. of fear. Mm. And uh, so the sentiment there is a little bit different than the Indian uh, uh, bhakti songs because it's it's not romantic in that sense. It's it's more more like plaintive. Plaintive. I'm lost. Take care of me. Yeah. yeah. And um, but I and I just love that image. Cover me with your feathers. It's yeah. You know, That's yeah. Me too. But it's like. It, it, the plaintive part is very much part of, of the, uh, you know, the yoga of devotion, for sure, yeah. and especially ex expressed through music and through, you know, these people, these Suradas and Mirabai. So I think it's directly connected. The, you know, one of the songs that I, I really love, I really love them all, but, but you just said Suradas, the, the song Love is an Awkward Thing. It, yeah. ripple, it ripples the minds with the mind with waves. That line was written in the 14th century, and um, things haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's human for beings sure. are human beings. Yeah, right, right. Should we listen to that song? Sure. Yeah, and let's then, listen. And then we should do one of the more up tempo songs. But let's okay. listen to that one. 
Okay, so love is an awkward thing, which is the uh, mystic named Sordas. Yeah, so let's uh, talk about love as an awkward thing. It's, it brings something up, actually. Um, I it just happened to be looking through this book of Ramdas' uh, Words of Wisdom. And love as an awkward thing is, is pretty well connected. Can I just read this little thing from yeah. him? This is the path of love the path of the heart. And, and everybody, of course, this is what we're talking about. Jai has expressed this on an album. Like all paths, it is fraught with pitfalls and traps. And most of your emotions are either in the service of your mind or frightening things that overwhelm you and make you afraid so you protect yourself from them. So you come through life a little bit like a hungry ghost where meaning it's not enough, it's not enough. We are beings that have huge needs for love, but seemingly it's like we have some amoeba that doesn't allow us to digest our food. I love that line, <laughs> that's really great. So though you get love, it goes through you, and then you need it all over again. This conception is so deep within all of us that we built an entire reality around it, and you think that's the way it is, that everybody needs love, and if you don't get it, you are deprived, and the more of it, the better, and you need it every day from everything. So, um, fraught. <laughs> this path is fraught. Um, you know, and... Uh, that, Jai, you know, that's why I think the, the inclusion of... Um, while we were in India with Maharaji, and then after it, many of us, of course... Uh, uh, I don't know. Wouldn't you say 90% of us did Vipassana courses, for instance? I mean, we. Yeah, you, I, I so, know yeah. because you were with me in one yeah. of them. <laughs> so, uh, so that just a little bit of the discriminating wisdom that seems to be very much part of our legacy, I would say. That's the best way to put it. So, um, and, you know, Ram Dass was really good at elucidating these particular um a roadmap that you could look out for the way in which you know we deprive ourselves you know it's yeah, self deprivation we deprive ourselves of what is is constantly available. flowing towards us yeah available yeah, yeah. so um yeah how did that song come together though uh Again, it was Nubia looking through through a book. I think it was called uh, "Songs of the Bhakti Saints." I think that's what it was, or oh. poems of, poems of the Bhakti Saints. I'm not sure. It was a compilation, and she she was you know she, Nubia was kind of the um, explorer for all of these songs. She she was going through all these books and finding finding ones that that she thought could work for us. Mm. So she found that and. I read it, and the writing of that song w was was pretty immediate. You know, I play, I picked up the guitar, and it, it's not a, it's kind of a not normal chord progression for mm -hmm. me. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a little bit stretched from what I usually play, and technically it was a little hard, but 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 the melody and the, the chords came so quickly, and then I then. I kind of created the two verses based on what was in the poem, but but with my own, you know, slant. 
And then the production of it was very, very simple. And that song was me playing guitar and my dear friend, who's also my guitar teacher, Jose Neto, playing a uh, nylon string guitar. He's a Brazilian, I yeah, consider I th- a master. Um, I, don't, I think, uh, did he play with Krishnadas recently? Do you know? I don't think Or is Jose- it a different guy? Different oh, it's person. a different guy. Different guy. Oh, it is a yeah. different guy. Jose Lewis, Boy, there's some great guitar players in Brazil. This is really true. The like the baseline, bottom line is so much higher than here. Um, but Jose, he not currently, but he's lived in Fairfax for a very long time, um, and well, he spends part of the year in Fairfax, part of the year in Brazil, and part of the year touring with Steve Winwood. He was Steve Winwood's guitarist for decades. So anyway, it was just, it was just the two guitars and my voice. And, and, you know, I thought, oh, I should add backup vo- voices. I should add this. I should add that. Every time I, I came up with that, Nubia said, no, keep it really intimate. I have to say that not only on the lyrics, but Nubia was really a co-producer on this whole project in terms of like, bouncing ideas and coming up with ideas that I thought at first were like kind of off the wall because she's not coming from a normal musician's headspace, you know, but, but for this song particularly, she said, no, keep it, keep it empty. Keep it, keep it just with the the two guitars. And the last song on the album with, which is just me and the banjo, that, that was uh, kind of a tribute that, that, that song, was not based on any ancient text. It was it was sort of like, how can we thank the people who came before us? You know, we have so much to thank for, to, uh, uh, you know, mm. all the men and women f- from time and memorial who expressed their devotion and their, their relationship with God in song. Uh, we, we wouldn't, where would we, you know, we have so much to thank. So mm. uh, again, it was a situation where I was just playing this little waltz on the banjo, old timey style, Appalachian style, and you know I play banjo around the house a lot, and um, and I said, "Nubi, you got any words?" And she said, "No." And then she walked upstairs and she came downstairs with the complete song written. <laughs> 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 and again, mm. it was like, "Okay, I should add a chordy and I should add this." And she said, "No, no, no, keep it really intimate," mm. and and. It's a beautiful way, I think, to end the album. Yeah, I loved uh, you playing the banjo. So great. I loved, uh, you know, the, the, the kirtans that you've done with it, too. Really. The, that mix is really phenomenal, I think. But then you also played, and only on one song, I believe, of my notes, Don't Fly Away, you played Dotar. Yeah. Which is song. like everybody, a mini Sirod, kind of. I had so, to get... Um, you know, it's such a funny thing. With guitar and banjo, you need very short nails on your left hand. For dotar and sirod, you need very long nails on your left hand. So I actually got uh, fake fingernails <laughs> in did. order to play. <laughs> I glued them on with crazy glue. <laughs> oh, man. And you told me not that long ago you really haven't been playing dotar. Or much. I haven't. I, I practiced for about two weeks before we recorded that, just to, you know, get the intonation right again. Yeah. Um, right. That song was also different from the rest of the songs. That a very, 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 very dear friend of mine, I, I won't say his name, but as someone who was very important in my life, um, uh, got early onset Alzheimer's. And, well, it was all coming very quickly. And... So I, I wrote that song, I just, after he died, I just wrote that song and just sang it into my phone, you know, with the guitar, Don't Fly Away, because it was just so, I was so sad. I was so, uh, mm. I was, mm. you know, one of the brightest people I've known, bright meaning shiny. Mm. And, and then I forgot about the song. I sent it to his wife just as a voicemail, you know, voice message, and I completely forgot about it. And we were deep in the recording of this album. So th- this song is a little out of the sphere of the other songs. And I-, I was looking, th- just occasionally I-, I go through my voice messages and, and I came across it. And I oh. was just like almost started crying. And then, mm. you know, I kind of reworked it in a different key. And, and um, we recorded it. And 
but then, you know, you know, Nubi was saying to me, we got to do a new version of Let Me Be Sky for this album. And I was like, no, you can't do a new version of Let Me Be Sky because Let Me Be Sky was on Thunder Love. And it, in, in some ways it was the progenitor, is that the word? You know, Progenitor, it, maybe. Yeah, it, it was a song <laughs> from a, a, a yeah. 15th century Bengali poet. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a foreshadowing of this album, put it mm. that way. And so, but I didn't want to redo it. Because um, I thought that the original recording was just so right on. Mm -hmm. But, so we're, we're doing Don't Fly Away. And at the end, well, this was actually interesting. Because then Ezra, I was playing it with Ezra. Ezra does all, all the keyboards on this album. Yeah, no. I and, and so he came up with this whole modulated chord progression that was a little bit more jazz oriented that I would never have thought of. Mm -hmm. and, but it, it, it was perfect. So mm. we kind of rewrote the ending and uh, changed it from Don't Fly Away, which was my personal deep attachment, right? Don't mm. go, don't go, don't mm. go. And changed it to Fly Away, Fly mm. Away. Mm. And then added, let me be sky, let me be sky. I see the heavens when I look in your eyes. So, you know, so anyway, we all, was, this was a family affair. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Oh boy, um, I, I love yeah. that song. Yeah, no, that song is very great. I mean, we have to, we should play that song. It's <laughs> touching, you know. It's, yeah, All right, even let's without look. knowing the story. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you get it completely. You don't have to know anything. Although, you know, people, when you get this record, which uh, is very oh, easy. Yeah. Let me <laughs> let me tell you, it's only available on my website. The CD. Uh, the CD, yeah, yeah streaming, yeah. streaming is everywhere. everywhere, yeah. But the CD and soon the CDs are all signed, and and the the vinyl will be signed as well. And they're not going to be in stores. They're not going to be in Amazon or anything like that. Just on jayutol.com. Yeah, and that's a great way, by the way, to support artists. In this case, of course, Jai, uh, and get a much much better sound. It's worth having, you know, one of those just. Uh, I've got it's just an Apple CD DVD player, so I can play things still. You know, yeah. most especially music because it's uh, it's sick how how compressed that MP3 sounds like. But still, and then it, going th going through Bluetooth, yeah, headphones. right, yeah, right, all of that. Oh God! But uh, it still comes across. So we're, I'm being a little bit um, effete by saying that in this digital modern age you know yeah but I you know agree. that's why people are buying uh, vinyl now you know it's just uh, it sounds way better and it's kind of fun too i love the artwork in this album it was done yeah, by yeah that's really by, lovely the artist friend in new york and um i can't wait to see it on vinyl mm -hmm. you know to see that sadhu uh, full full size <laughs> yeah yeah no it's gonna be great oh god we gotta. Uh, we we should talk after. We gotta get some and put them in Ramdas's shop. Oh, okay. That would be great. That'd be great. Both yeah. CDs and and uh, vinyl. Be wonderful. Um. So I have to switch gears a little bit. Not much. Um. I said we were going to play this song. Maybe we'll play it as we go out or something. You know, after we finish this, uh, talking. But I. I told you earlier, I was having a little bit of a hard day, just technology screw ups and, you know, just like, is this, is this what they call, you know, we're in Mercury or whatever that Mercury is. Mercury retrograde is 365 yeah. days a year. <laughs> 24 7. <laughs> if you're over 70. <laughs> so good. Anyhow, I was looking through the catalog, uh, your catalog. Um, that I got in my, in my music. And I came across a track called Bus Has Come from the original World Music album. I mean, I think you have albums before that. You have a couple. No, no, that, that was the That's, first. Really? Well, I had cassette That's albums. It. Oh, yeah, right. That's but it. that was the first CD. Imagine cassette albums. Oh, shit. Um, 
and, and it's a CD that we did and Jai did, uh, actually recorded by my brother-in-law in Montreal, where I'm from, and Jai came, and and uh, I, st I and we finished up other tracks in California and Los Angeles. Um, I still love that record. I mean, it's still so great. And but what I I so bus has come made me think. Because Neem Karoli Baba <coughs> Maharaji used to say to us at a certain time, okay, Jao, get out. And in English, he would go, bus has come. <laughs> and it was the bus that would take us back to Nainital. Uh, so it just the title of it got me all misty. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to put this on. So I put it on. This is earlier today. And Jai... You probably haven't listened to this thing in forever, me. right? Okay, so the, the, there's a, Jai does vocalizations over a very unusual rhythmic track uh, with melody, um, but the vocalization is the emblem to me of what our experience was when Maharaji said, get out, get out, and we wouldn't go. At first, we wouldn't go, and he wouldn't say anything, and stuff would keep going on, and then, and then he'd say it a little bit more forcefully. It took him maybe three times before we got scared and we moved. <laughs> and the leaving, although it was so sweet because you're imbued with all of this, absolutely the unconditionality that he represented. Uh, then there was, but it was you were, it was gone. It was leaving, and, and we never knew if the next day was actually going to come. Yeah. I mean, so, that, that's what human life is. We never know if the next day is going to yeah. come. So yeah. we're so filled with love at each day and so filled with the agony of, is it going to be over? Yeah. You know, or, or how about this? Okay, the agony of, yeah, maybe, you know, the next day you don't know what's going to come. This may not be happening, period. And then, so there's the longing to get that back, which is what Ramdas was talking about, because mentally, if you get into that, you know, then you, it's never enough if it's in your head. But there's a certain place in in one's heart that is longing for this free, unconditional uh, state that we happen to be so fortunate to be in when we were with this this being, and. Uh, that longing is so present in your in this song, okay, that you have not it, listened to. It's funny, you know, in some ways, I, I feel like, you know, it's like years and years and years and decades and many, many albums. In some ways, I feel like I've only made one song. I mean, they're all... Mm -hmm. They're all yeah. sort of the same song. Yeah, right. You know, no matter how much variety musically there's been and lyrically and you know so much variety but in the essence it's sort of all the same song mm, yeah and it started with bus has come <laughs> <laughs> it started with bus has come there's some other by the way that record is called footprints, footprints. and i mean it's got things like um well this incredible indian singer lakshmi shankar and um and your friend, that incredible, why is his name? Uh, name? Don Cherry. Don, yeah, Don Cherry, who was a famous jazz musician who, um, I mean, he played in the bebop area with, with the guys, you know. I mean, he, uh, he, was, he had more feel than most musicians that one would ever hear. I mean, he was, yeah. and he played on this Indian track. Uh, it was a kirtan, actually. Right, Raghupati Raghava. So, Don was amazing. You, you know, when I first met Don Cherry, we immediately connected because we had both studied Indian raga with with a master named Z M Dagar. Oh, um, I, I had I had studied that. with Dagar uh, in Berkeley for many months. This was like an in between studying with Ali Khan and then I had sort of stopped, and then I started studying with. Style, the older style with with Dagar, and Don had 
gone to India some time previously and found Dagar, Dagar Saab, and studied with him for a little while. And we, th mm. this is like how our conversation started. Uh, Adan was, you know, he was a known, well-known jazz musician, but he was one of the people who kind of cracked the door open on world music mm. and bringing, bringing East and West together. He called it multi-culti. That's what he, oh, that yeah, was the phrase no, that he said used. That. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Anyhow, it's a, the combination and, uh, is, is pretty, pretty amazing. Can you get that CD in your store? Uh, not in my store. Um, no. I think that it's still available. Oh, as a stream? It's still available on Amazon. Well, as a stream for sure, but I think the CDs are available on Amazon. Really, yeah? I wow. believe so. And and if not, check eBay. eBay. <laughs> <laughs> or you should start for, making them. Uh, you know. I know. That's another story. Yeah. Um, but uh, I could, I could. Yeah. Anyhow, here, let's just uh, listen to, because again, we're talking about a song here. Here's an experience. It bus has come. got that insistent thing going and with with you counterpoint with this incredible rog it was some sample you know i, I had a very cheap eight second sam or eight bit eight second sampler and i don't remember what sample i you know what what it was but i had my own own sampling for for that whole album and um Mm. And I had a little sequencer. I didn't use a computer because I, you know, even now I'm not so adept computer wise, but I had a little uh, sequencer and I made this sample and I made this sequence late at night, you know, crazy. And then figured out, wait a second, this should be a song and I'll sing over it. <laughs> I mean, it's 30 odd years ago. Yeah. <laughs> More, so, right? I, I uh, early, early 90s. 90, so it's about 30, 10. 10, 10, 10. Yeah, right, 30 something. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Anyhow, I love it, and it to me, it, it <laughs> it's a direct fit with this new album. Nothing, not musically in any which way, uh, but emotionally, um, the Bob emotionally, of yeah. longing that's in that vocalization. Yeah. I'm going to show the, the CD cover again. Oh, by the way, I even have shirts. I'm like full-on commercial. <laughs> yeah. You're also, oh, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Hold that up again, would you? Because you froze there for a second. Uh, yeah, I love that sadhu. That's great. That really is Me great. too. The sad, you know, I was talking to Giuliano, who did the artwork, and I told him, well, I put the CD on my altar as an offering when I got it. You know, to Maharaji, here's the CD do with it what you think um, it's yours it's my offering to you which I've done f for you know always I do yeah, yeah. And, but then then the, the CD was on the altar and I started looking at the cover and the sadhu just completely came to life oh, really? so, so then I, I was talking to Giuliano the artist and uh, he said as he was painting the sadhu it was like you know, because he didn't, he wasn't working from a photo or anything. He oh, had a really? bunch of photos of different sadhus, you know, but yeah. but he said this this being presence kind of sat there and, and dictated the the creation of the artwork. Mm. That's really kind wow. of cosmic. And, That's great. And I feel it when I look at this guy's mm. eyes. 
Yeah. Let's try to give him a name. <laughs> I can't. <though. laughs> That's well, you know, Ram Dass talking about the room where you enter into imagination and connect in reality. Yeah. So you never know. Wow. Um, so I know you got to go, but um, everything we've been talking about will be linked up in the show notes on beherenownetwork.com slash mindrolling. And uh, yeah, do, I mean, I don't have to say anything about it. I think that uh, we've given you enough of a glimpse that uh, you'll uh, get this beautiful, beautiful album um, that is so cohesive too. Even, I mean, there's a song, which song has um, someone singing in Hebrew? Uh, Cover Me With Your Feathers. Oh, so it's that song, yeah. Yeah. Um, That's, I love that combination. You know, I love that kind of thing, you know. Me too. It's all one. I mean, it really is. Amir Pais is a really, really good friend of mine. Yeah? Yeah. What Um, is he, is he he a cantor or something? No, no, he's he's a Bakta, gypsy, Israeli hippie guy. Oh, yeah? Um, he lives in now in Australia. Um, he was in a very successful world music band in Israel for many years, but then him and his wife, his wife's American, they decided it, it was just too stressful to live in Israel with, mm. you know, war zone. So they moved to Australia, but we, we are very, very close friends. And in fact, he's coming to visit at the first week of March, him and his wife, and I'm doing an online concert and we're going to do that song, and he's going to sing oh, the, that's the Hebrew part. Really? I, uh, when is when is this podcast going to be released? Probably after that, right? Um, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't program it. But uh, when when is that concert? March third. March third. We it's got a couple soon. of weeks. Yeah, it's possible it'll go up before then. So again, everybody, we're going to put these dates up. Um, you know, Jai also has a kirtan camp that uh, I know it's, people who've come now. out of it that are really, you know, uh, appreciative to have taken. It's it's open to enroll. Did you say? I, I, I said that the oh, am I right on this? The, well, we're going to put the it. New we're going to camp gonna, has just started. Just start, yeah. Well, you got to send me. This is business we'll take care of after, but send me the dates because we're going to put it up on the site. <laughs> Okay, so that's let's awesome. yeah let's go let's go out with the uh, don't fly away because we we talked about it so we're gonna leave you with don't fly away this is mind rolling on be here now network go to be here now network dot com and there's a plethora of all of Jai and my friends happen to be there <laughs> thank you Jack so much Kornfield, Rag- uh, Ragu thank you thank you thank you uh, for thank inviting you. me thank you for being here we'll see you all next week bye bye Jai. Just
just a freight train rushing from yesterday. Don't fly away. Fly.